Hey, how's it going? Today I'm going to show you how to do a problem that is found on the AP Physics C or AP Physics 1 multiple choice test. And the problem is this. A marble is fired from a spring-loaded gun straight up and reaches a maximum height of H. The same gun is pointed at an angle of 30 degrees above the horizontal. What is the maximum height that the marble can reach? Okay, so pretty much this problem states this. You have some sort of projectile launcher and it's able to fire a marble to a height of H. Okay. So like such. And the same projectile launcher is then used to fire a marble at an angle of 30 degrees above the horizontal. Okay. So the question is, what is this new maximum height can it achieve or will it achieve okay so the first thing we have to do is figure out our variables but we know at max height so at maximum height for both situations so at max height the marble's vertical velocity so the velocity in the y direction is zero meters per second okay now in both situations as well the gravity at max height so our gravitational acceleration so gravity is constant at negative 10 meters per second squared okay okay the max height, height of situation the velocity is zero we know the gravitational accelerations in both situations will be zero and then again, well, what do we really need to solve for in order to, to find this question? Well, you can't really solve for time because the time of max height for the first situation versus the second will be different. So the time for the first situation, we'll call this number one, and we'll call this number two. The time of one at max height will not equal the time of two, okay? Because obviously they're not going to go the same height. Um, but what we do need to know is we need to know how fast the gun launches. So what is the initial velocity of this launcher? Because that is going to remain constant no matter whatever angle I do. Okay, so we need to find what this velocity initial is. All right, so that will be the same. Now if you understand that we have these variables and we are looking for our velocity initial, we can then use some kinematics. Now, like I said, we don't know time, and the only kinematic equation that doesn't have time in it is velocity final squared equals velocity initial squared plus 2g delta y. Well, that is the change in vertical displacement. Now, we have said before that at maximum height, this is zero. So we can rewrite this as zero squared equals vi squared plus 2g and in both situations they do not use delta y they use h I'm just going to write h right here so sorry this v naught right here is the same thing as vi forgive me I'm trying to use two different notations here so example I need to solve for this velocity initial because if I know this velocity initial here then I know the velocity initial in this situation okay so solving for that gives me this negative vi squared equals 2g h. This negative go away because the gravitational constant is actually negative. So again, this cancels out. So the velocity initial will be equal to the square root of 2g h. Okay. So that is how fast our gun will shoot. All right. So we know that is the velocity needed to achieve a height of h in the first situation. But the problem asks, how high will it go? Now obviously, we are going to get a height, um, the height of less. So whatever the height in 2 will be less than the height of 1. So we'll call this 2 and we'll call this 1, just for fun. Okay? So we obviously know that in situation 2, it will not go as high. Now how do we solve for that? Well, if you notice here, what is the velocity initial in the y direction? Okay, so again, even though the velocity is going in the x direction, we're looking for vertical displacement. So we know what our v naught is. 
and we know that the velocity initial in the y direction, remember, this has to have some sort of v not y or velocity initial in the y direction component, so I can write this as i or whatever, is actually equal to the velocity initial sine of theta, okay? Because that is the angle. If you look at it, so this is a little bit of a trig. If we launch it with some sort of velocity initial, our vy component, so our velocity initial and the y component, with respect to this angle theta, and if you think about it, we do have a right triangle here. And you have this angle right here, and it's also this angle. So you have the opposite in hypotenuse. So, so ka toa, and that's actually how we derive this equation. Okay, so we know what the velocity initial is. And we also know that at max height, the velocity final in the y direction will be zero. And again, we're pretty much going to use this exact same equation, except now we're going to solve for h. So we know zero squared, that's the velocity final squared, equals our velocity initial in the y direction squared plus 2gh. So let's solve for h. So we get this vi y squared equals 2gh. So solving for h, we get this vi y squared squared all over g equals. Now, like we said, the velocity initial, put this vi right here, it's just vi sine of theta. So we know vi is this. Okay, so we knew vi is square root 2g. So this turns into this, the square root of 2gh times the sine of 30. Okay, because that's my angle that I'm shooting at. All right. So now, if we notice here, we have velocity initial, but it's squared. So what we have to do is we have to square this. Now what's interesting is when you square this, you just get 2gh. And the sine of 30 is actually equal to 1 half. So actually what we were squaring is this. So we're going to square this. So again, whenever you square this, this square root goes away. So you have 2gh times the square root of 1 is just 1, and the square root of 2 is just 4. So vi squared is just 2gh over 4. That simplifies to gh all over 2. Okay, so now we're going to take this and plug it in right here. So the height component will equal g h all over 2 divided by 2 g. And since when we were dividing by a fraction, so g h over 2 divided by 2 g, this is over 1, we got to do the flip, so we have to flip it. So you have g h over 2 being multiplied by the reciprocal of that, which is 1 over 2 g. So this gives me g h all over 4 g. And we can see here, sorry I'm kind of drawing all this, that the height of the second one will be equal to, notice we have a g right here and g right here, and that will cancel out, it will just be h over 4. So the height will be 1 fourth the original. Okay, so I hope this helps. If so, give me a thumbs up and a like and, and subscribe for more physics content. Thank you. Have a great day.